you know what this is? This is the GoPro Hero 11. Now, it's a pretty awesome camera, I have to admit. It's got dual screens, it's got one on the front, one on the rear. It also has built-in Wi-Fi for transferring files, image stabilization, and yes, it can record at 4K 30 frames per second and more. But, you know, this is a really good camera. Now, the reason I mention this is because I often have people ask me, is there a cheaper alternative to a GoPro camera? Well, technically, if you go online, there are a lot of cheaper alternatives to GoPro cameras, but they're not very good. In fact, I always say, if you want GoPro quality, you have to pay GoPro prices. However, we're going to look at another camera. A camera I picked up that also has dual screens, records in 4K, has built-in image stabilization, and also wirelessly transfers files thanks to the built-in Wi-Fi. So stick around, sit back and relax and enjoy, because this is Demon View. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. I do appreciate you tuning in. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at a very special camera that I managed to pick up. What makes this camera special? Well, because we're coming up to hitting 2K subscribers on this channel, um, this camera is gonna be won by somebody after I review it. Yeah, so it will be out of its packaging and all that, but the only time I'll use this camera is to review it and do some uh, comparison videos. But one of my lucky viewers is gonna win this camera as well as a whole bunch of Demon View goodies as soon as we hit 2K. So stick around for more announcements about that. Now I will say, if you don't wanna wait till we hit 2K subscribers, then you should start clicking like and subscribe right now. Encourage your friends and family to do the same because the sooner we hit 2K, the sooner we can start that giveaway. So if you like this channel and if you like these videos, make sure you click like and subscribe. It really does help out with the channel views and it doesn't cost you a single penny to do so. So go ahead, click them now. Okay, so on with the video. Like I said, um, I picked up this camera specifically so I could put it in the goodie bag to kind of give away to whichever lucky winner wins this 2K competition. And, uh, you know, I might even have some runner-up prizes, we'll see. But in the meantime, what is this amazing action camera? Well, it is the Vivitar 4K Ultra HD, HD action camera with built-in Wi-Fi. And it actually has dual screens, one in the back and one in front. Oh, if I hold it up like this, hey, it looks like I'm on a bicycle riding with a helmet on. Cool. So, what does this camera package contain? Well, surprisingly enough, it contains a camera in some sort of waterproof case, I believe. It contains a floaty handle, a tripod, which is kind of here. It also has a 64, uh, is that 64 gigabyte card? Yeah, it's a 64 gigabyte SD card. Not one, but two batteries and a whole bunch of mounts. Now, I was actually surprised that it didn't say it contained a USB cable for charging it, but if you look kind of inside here, it does. So we're gonna be unpacking this video and then later throughout the day, I'll be doing some test shoots and comparing it to the quality of the GoPro Hero 11, which, you know, is GoPro's flagship camera at the moment. Now, we're gonna talk about the price of this camera because I managed to pick this camera up for well, you may be thinking $100. No. You may be thinking $50. No. Maybe you're thinking $20. No. I picked this camera up from Walmart for 10 whopping dollars. Yep, $10 was all this cost. So um, I was pretty surprised that this whole package here was $10. I mean, this is actually probably about $5 worth of packaging right here. Trust me on that. And the fact is, it's a dual screen camera, two batteries, floaty handle, a tripod. I mean, these accessories are worth more than $10. If you go on Amazon, try and buy these, yeah, you're gonna be paying more than $10 for all these accessories. So what type of quality can we get from this camera? Well, before we get around to the quality tests, let's do the standard unboxing. Okay, so here we are with the uh, Vivitar action camera. And as you can see, this is the unit here itself. And this is what it looks like when it's attached to your head. And well, actually, I think that uh, this picture of a head is a lot smaller than a person's actual head, unless they're like some sort of midget or weird child with worry lines on their face. But uh, hey, some suggestions here. Go mountain biking, go swimming with this. Is that a starfish or an octopus? I can't really see from this angle. I think it's a starfish. Or create a vlog. Um, okay, I don't like being told what to do, but sure, go ahead. You can also share the memories, wirelessly transfer photos. Ah, I hope you can transfer video too. And bonus extra battery, floaty handles, 
and dual screens. So let's get unpacking and see what it's like. Oh, and I'm gonna stop recording this now because it's probably in that packaging I won't be able to open with other scissors and I don't have one with me, so I'll go have to fetch one. Okay, that was slightly embarrassing. I actually didn't have a uh, cutting implement or a scissors lying around, which is terrible because what happens if uh, I randomly feel like stabbing somebody and I've got nothing to hand, I'd have to say, hey, wait there a minute while I go fetch a sharp implement and leave them standing there and then come back and stab them. So, you know, embarrassing. But here we are, we've now kind of like made a little cut in the package. So let's open this fellow. And actually once you kind of like cut the top of the package, it's very easy to open. So here we go. In fact, yeah, that is really easy to open. Thank you. This is kind of really what I would call frustration free packaging. Now, by the way, when this prize goes out, it's not going to be in this box since it's all ripped and it's rather sizable. So, you know, I might just try and pick up uh, a nice little camera case to put this stuff and the extra goodies in. Speaking of goodies, what do we have here? Um, so first of all, we have a floating handle with a small lanyard. Now, you know, I actually have one of these for my GoPro camera. I've never actually used it, but uh, you know, actually they are quite handy. They are waterproof and because they're so big, bright and yellow, they're kind of an improvement over some of the other floating handles that I've seen. I mean, you're not gonna kind of lose that in the water since it's actually so bright. You can see it there. But uh, what it doesn't really have, I've noticed, is an attachment for the lanyards to go onto. Now, that's usually a rather simple solution. I'll show you really quickly how I usually attach a lanyard. And that is, this seems to be a short screw. There's a longer screw. To attach a lanyard, simply, you know, you can actually just put it through the inside of that. Put your screw through. And once your camera's attached, that's it. Your lanyard is going nowhere. And in fact, that's probably the best way to actually do it. Have it in your hand and when it slips, hey, it's still gonna be here, wrapped around your wrist or whatever. Now it's wrapped around your wrist. And there we go. So floaty handles, excellent. They're, uh, this is kind of a cheap floaty handle. There's no tripod or anything built in, but it's a good floaty handle. It will float and you can actually see it because it's bright and yellow. Then we have what appears to be a handlebar mount. See that? So you can actually adjust the width of this. It's got some nice rubbery grippy bits inside. Now, I don't know how well attached that is. It, will just, it could just fall out, so be careful with that. But uh, yeah, that's that's actually quite a nice mount. It's, it's not very wide though, so it's gonna have to go around a very small handlebar. But maybe that's why the picture of the guy was small. He's a little person riding a little bike that's got little bars on it. Um, else we have a 90 degree adapter. These are quite useful if you're mounting your GoPro and you need to change the angle or action camera in this case, uh, these little 90 degree angles are quite nice because you can put it down and now your camera faces that way just by attaching that, really simple. We have some adhesive mounts and a spare adhesive pad. I like that. But the thing is with adhesive mounts, not all adhesives are the same and to tell you the truth, some adhesives are better than others and I'm gonna guess this probably isn't the world's best adhesive. Not really sure if I trust it. I always use magnetic mounts or clamp mounts. We have another adhesive mount, but this seems to have a tripod adapter in it. That's nice enough, but it also has what looks like to be a knockoff of the GoPro quick release buckle. So that's, that's actually quite good. I appreciate that. Then we have a camera tripod adapter. So if you have a camera tripod, you can put this on it like that. And now we actually can adapt your GoPro to a camera tripod adapter thingy. We got some more spare screws. These are kind of plasticky feeling, but uh, they're just as good as the GoPro screws because if you look inside, that's an actual Phillips head top there. So if you ever need to tighten your camera get a Phillips head screwdriver, tighten the darn thing. We have the 64 gigabyte card. Uh, any details on that? Well, if you look closely, let me take it out of the box here and hopefully I don't drop it on the floor and lose it because it is loose, imagine that. Ooh, hey, come on. I don't know if we can focus on that. No, apparently the camera is not playing nice and won't focus. Oh, there we go. It's It says it's class three. I'm not sure if that's true or not. There's no manufacturer name on it or anything. I'm guessing it is a 64 gigabyte card since it did come in the official box, but uh, whether or not it's a very good 64 gigabyte card is another thing. Here is our charging cable and, oh dear. 
That is the old style USB charging cable that you used to use on phones. So it's not USB-C or USB-B, I think, or something. Either way, that's the old style charger. We have here what appears to be a camera frame. So I'm guessing the camera just kind of slips inside of here with a little tensioner to catch it. And that looks like a tripod mount. So yeah, that's, that's not too bad. Our uh, tripod. Oh, actually, I'm liking this tripod. It, it looks nice and they are bendable legs. Look at that. And I have to say this, this feels like a little solid tripod and it's got balls there. It can tighten up so that this doesn't kind of flop around too much. It, it's got a tiny little handle for moving it about, just like a real camera tripod would have. And then it's got a standard tripod mount on it, so you can put your quick release buckle on it there if you wanted to, and just slap your camera on and off using your quick release, or you can actually use this, which is the frame mount. So yeah, um, I actually like this tripod. Um, yeah, I would say this is actually worth more than the whole thing together. I mean, this is really good value. Then we have some basic velcro we mounty strappy bits. There seems to be a selection of them in there. Um, if I, yeah, if you actually look at some of these uh, adhesive mounts, there is room for a strap to actually go around them here too. Now, it'd have to go down and under, otherwise you'd be covering your mount there. So that's the way it would go. We have troubleshooting for the DBR923 kit black, which I guess is what this is. Plug it in, charge it, make sure it's turned on. That pretty much covers it. We have an easy guide, read me first. Oh, I should actually do it that way so you can actually see. Read me first. And um, I won't. Oh, there's a big stop. Important, please do not return to store. If you're having trouble, we're here to help stop. Call us and it's a 1-800 number. And then a QR code where you can actually scan this QR code for a tutorial. And yeah, I don't mind that. There seems to be some is this? It's a sticker of some sort. Uh, gosh, in this low light, I can't really read what that says. Power button, long press, turn on and off, short press, open mode setting or toggle setting menu. Shutter button, capture picture or start top video in menu mode, confirm. Wi-Fi, short press, turn on off, Wi-Fi, long press to switch between front and black back screens. A menu or mode setting, short press to move to next. Well, Okay, I'm not sure why it's on a sticker, but maybe they want you to stick that all over the camera. And that's it. And then we have the camera unit itself. And, hmm, okay, this is a weighty little fella. Oh, I do like this lock. I mean, that's actual a double lock. So you have to pull this to open it. Gosh. And then pull it. Yep. I like that locking mechanism here. That's quite handy. Then we have the camera itself in this little dive case. Or if I can get it out. Okay, that's easy enough. Um, yeah, it seems like a good clear case. Looking at the glass here on top of that, that's that's actually fairly see-through. Usually what happens here is these cases are made out of a softer, cheaper plastic, while the uh, cover here is made out of uh, a nicer glass that just won't scratch as easily. Now we do have the uh, sticker on the front and the sticker on the back. And if anyone remembers with the older GoPro models, this is a problem that used to affect GoPros. People would actually get the cameras and then say, I can't get rid of the picture on the back. They'd be pressing the buttons and everything, not realizing it's a sticker that you need to pull off. This is why GoPro then went to that plain white type of uh, sticker to cover the lenses of their cameras instead of having these stickers here. Taking the one off the front and yeah, it's quite a small little compact camera. It's very light. I have to say it is much lighter than the GoPro. Let's do a size comparison. This is the GoPro Hero 11. This is the Vivitar. As you can see, it it's a good bit smaller. Yeah, smaller um, and a little bit thinner as well. But uh, yeah, there's no kind of removable lens protector there. So you're gonna wanna be careful. Uh, and yeah, that's everything that's in the package, it seems. It's not waterproof when it's not in this, as you can see, because it's got the USB port exposed right there on the side. And if we open it up, oh, there's a battery actually already in here. That's incredible. Considering how light this camera was, I didn't think there'd be a battery in here. And that's a fairly lightweight battery. And this camera is even lighter again. This is so light. 
Wish I had a little weighing scales here so I could tell you how light this camera is, but this is a very, very light camera. Um, huh, I wonder if it's charged. Well, what we're gonna do here is, uh, yeah, I'm gonna charge up everything, put the SD card in, and then start shooting some video comparisons. Okay, I will try and keep all this Vivitar stuff together. Um, I've plugged it in to start charging. As you can see, there's a red light on the power button and a blue light, which I presume is Wi-Fi. And yeah, that's uh, charging up at the moment. Uh, yeah, and this is now recording, <laughs> apparently. So whoever gets this, I'm, I'm probably gonna leave some of the files on this card so you can actually see what I'm recording. Now it does say, uh, has some weird stuff on it. 4K, 30 frames per second, EIS, electronic image stabilization. Oh, 58.2 gigs remaining, and we're not quite charged yet, but uh, well, that's interesting. Now, I will actually take you through the menus and stuff like this once it's charged, but uh, I believe from what I've seen so far, show video, yeah, I'm gonna have to go through the menus and let you see what's going on here because it is quite interesting looking. So yeah. Let me get back to you on that one, but as you can hear, it's charging and it's working. So there's a surprise, $10 and it's working. Right, I'm gonna try and keep all this Vivitar stuff kind of separate, but uh, let's do a quick comparison here. This is the GoPro Hero 9 battery and this is the Vivitar battery. Now, as you can see, we do it that way. It is quite a bit smaller. It is also quite a bit thinner as you can see, or maybe not. And I have to say, it is quite a bit lighter. Now it's still a lithium ion battery. And for those of you who really, really want to know, looks like it's a 3.7 volts lithium ion battery, 500 milliamps at 1.585 milliamp hours. I can't really read, but hey, if anybody out there likes their battery stuff and can finally get this camera to focus, there you go. Yeah, 1.585 watt hours. Well, there you go. And compare that to what's written on the GoPro battery. Good luck, because I can't read that at all. Oh, the camera just made a sound. I wonder if it's fully charged. Okay, apparently it's still charging and that noise that I actually heard was it just powering off while, you know, it doesn't want to stay on. Now, well, you're probably not going to believe this, but I'm looking at this rear screen here and I'm pretty impressed actually. Uh, yeah. Are there, Gosh, it's going to be hard to show you this while it's charging, but let's see if we can do this real quick. Let's just pull that out. Let's look at some of the shooting modes in this while we're here. So if you can hold this up to you so you can actually see what the screen looks like. Um, there we go. Fortunately, it's not going to be great kind of like focusing on this. There we go. Oh, crap, that's actually recording. Okay, so we got video mode. Arr. Yeah, I could do this probably with a mountain tripod and all that, but why? Video mode, that looks like slow motion. Loop video, time-lapse video, photo mode, auto photo. Well, that seems to have like a time-lapse thing on it too. Uh, what the heck is that? Let me read it. Burst photos, okay, interesting. And then, no, oh, that's time-lapse photos. What was the other one? Then we have video album and photo album and then we're back to video i want to see what that other one was loop video time lapse video photo auto photo wait a minute is that... i have no idea what auto photo is because it's got like a clock on it and it looks like a looping icon burst photos time lapse video i'm gonna to have to find out what auto photo is because i do not know and it just looks rather strange gosh i really wish i'd set that up for manual focus anyway um yeah I think it's about time we start doing some test shots with this. Okay, this is a low light video test using the Vivitar 4K action camera. I've turned off the lights here to get as low a light as possible to run this test. So this is how it looks and we'll see if that's good enough. Okay, and this is the same low light test using the GoPro Hero 11. I've got hyper smooth turned on, so it could be a bit blurry, but I'm running the test in the exact same lighting conditions, exact same resolution as the Vivitar. So let's see how that looks. Okay, this is me recording outdoors with the GoPro Hero 11. In what I would say is pretty good lighting conditions. I'm not using a media mod or anything like that because the Vivitar doesn't have one. So therefore we're just using the in-camera mics. 
and this is me recording outdoors with the Vivitar in the exact same lighting conditions. I'm looking at the screen here, I look kind of purple or something, but uh, I will see what we can do with uh, some video editing later. That's a train horn going off, so, you know, kind of, we'll see how good these mics are. But, do we have any motion blur? I don't know. Okay, I'm back. So I've done some initial tests on this Vividhar action camera. Is it a GoPro? Definitely not. Is it worth 10 bucks? Yes, yes it is. In fact, I would say it's actually worth more than 10 bucks. I mean, I was pretty impressed with it. Now, one of the things I will say, it's the only fault I really kind of found, well, besides all the other faults, um, is this tripod. This tripod has a little quick release system on it like so, which is handy for taking the camera in and out. Now, this is a custom kind of plate here, so if you quickly release it, there's there's not really much you're going to be able to attach it to. Uh, yeah, so I don't really get that, but yeah, it's still there. But when this is on this tripod, this is very loose. I mean, you hear that? So if you're going to be walking with this tripod, using that as a selfie stick, you're going to get a lot of rattle. Uh, what I would probably recommend is you actually use the adapter and maybe use this uh, floaty. It's big, it's yellow. If you drop it, you're going to find it. But no rattles so that's a lot better yep use this on your desktop that's absolutely fine it's a fine tripod i have to admit and what's really handy if we'll check this out real quick is the uh, cage that the thing goes into is actually quite handy it's got a little indentation on the top of the camera there and as you can see it's got this little point of it you just slide it in that's it it's locked in not going anywhere to release it just push that up pull that out and the fact that it's got a tripod mount on both sides means that if you are using this as a dash camera, you don't have to turn it upside down in your car. If it has a tripod mount, you can just actually have it in the car hanging this way, and that is very handy. That's that's a heck of a thing for such a cheap camera. Now, I have noticed that already the front screen is kind of getting a little bit scratched, and that's just from, you know, using it very lightly, but that's the type of uh, plastic that you would just get on these cameras. I'm pretty sure there's no protective film on that. Uh, rear screen looks looks fine, but these are not touch screens, so don't expect, you know, the GoPro touch screen. You are going to have to use your buttons to navigate. But I'm pretty impressed with this camera. I mean, for 10 bucks, and like I said, it's on sale for Amazon for 22 bucks. I'll leave the link down below. But uh, even for 22 bucks, this is a lot better than I was expecting. I mean, this is a pretty awesome little camera. Um, now I know what you're thinking. Yeah, it's not a GoPro camera. It maybe doesn't have the type of quality that you'd expect from a GoPro, so why would anyone want to buy it? Well, for 22 bucks, you can't go wrong. Fantastic value, and especially with all those accessories that you can use with the GoPro, those accessories are worth more. You know, if you were to buy them by themselves, you'd be paying a lot more, so yeah, that's a good reason to pick this up. If you want a 4K dash cam, yeah, that's gonna do the trick. And then on top of that, if you're a filmmaker and you want what's called a sacrificial camera, which means, let's say you're doing some ATV, you want to put a camera on the ground and kind of have the ATV drive over it, but you don't want to use your GoPro in case you accidentally drive over it, that's where you use a sacrificial camera like this. I mean, for 22 bucks on Amazon, yeah, I reckon that's the type of camera you want to use. If you're into archery and you want to get that shot where you shoot the bullseye, going straight at it, and you don't want to risk your GoPro, this is the camera you use because you're going to get the quality. So, yeah, there's a lot of reasons to buy this camera. But luckily, one of you won't have to because this camera will be part of the Demon View 2K follower giveaway. So, if you wanted to find out how you can win this camera and a whole bunch of Demon View goodies, stay tuned to this channel because as soon as we hit 2K, this competition will be coming up. So, hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos, please click like and subscribe. It really does help out with the channel and helps fund more videos and these types of giveaways. So if you don't want to wait for this giveaway, make sure you're getting those people out there, your friends, your family to hit like and subscribe, just like you should be doing. So until next time, cheerio.